Okay, so last time we were looking at the shorthand electronic configuration and we said that we were only worried about the elements that were on the very last uh, row, the elements that interacted with the world. Um, if we draw this out, so I have my atom and then I have my first energy level, my second energy level, and this is the Bohr model, not the Schrodinger model, my third energy level, all right? The electrons on this third energy level uh, block all of these things, my nucleus and my inner case. So these are called my core electrons. They don't actually do anything. They are uh, protected by my outer electrons, which are called my valence electrons. Okay, so my valence electrons are what I'm worried about because they're the ones that are interacting with the world around them. So um, finding out how many valence electrons is really, really easy as long as you have a periodic table um, because you can, uh, you just go to whatever, so if we're looking at silicon, I guess, it, let's just do an example here. Uh, you just go to that row that silicon's on and count over to silicon. So it has one, two, three, four valence electrons. Yes, you include the silicon. Um, one other thing that's even easier, the D block and the F block get very, very, very messy. So we're just going to get rid of them. We're not going to worry about them at all. Um, so if I have uh, polonium down here, then I would just uh, go to the row that it's on and count over one, two, three, four, five, six. And so polonium has six electrons that interact with the world. Same with everything else in this family. Okay. And so what we discovered, or the original way that they actually discovered the periodic table is they said, well, these guys all react the same, these guys all react the same, these guys all react the same, these guys so on and so forth. They always reacted the same going straight down. And so that's how they grouped them. Later they found out that it was because of the, uh, shell, the orbitals and the shells that they were in, um, that the electrons were in, that they all reacted the same. But um, that was just a coincidence, uh, something that confirmed what we'd already observed. So a uh, big thing that we get from that is everything in these columns is going to react the same, okay? In families or, um, or groups, you are going to see the reactivity be the same. You are not going to have the same reactivity in periods. This way is not going to react the same. We are not going to look at that, um, but this way is. All right, um, so that gives us... Uh, so we even named some of these. There are four names that we need to know. And so let's look, look at those names. Um, this first one is the alkali metals. The second one is the alkali earth metals. The third one is the halogens, and I ran totally out of room there, so sorry, H-A-L-O-G-E-N-S. And the last one is the noble gases. All right, um, so make sure that you do know those names. What we find is that all the atoms have a certain trend. They all want to end up looking electronically, so with the same number of electrons as these uh, elements, the noble gases. Um, because these elements have all of their spots in their shells filled. Um, so you can think of them as the really popular kids at school. Everybody wants to be like them. Right, so lithium, he has two choices. He can either start gaining electrons until he looks like neon, or he can lose an electron until he looks like helium. Since it's easy for him to lose one electron, he's gonna do that, and if I lose an electron, I gain a charge. So he's gonna have a plus one charge, and everything in this family, the alkali metals, ends up doing that, losing one electron to look like the previous uh, noble gas and getting a plus one charge. So make sure that you have that plus one in there and know that every element in there is going to get a plus one charge. Every element in this one is going to get a plus two because he can either lose two and go this way or he can gain six to go this way. All right, every element here, and remember we're, we're ignoring the D and the, the uh, F block because they have weird rules is going to get three because he is going to either gain three to look like helium or he's going to have to gain five to look like neon. Three is easier. 
um, these, this row is kind of the fun row because it is right in the middle. It can go either way. It can either gain four to look like, well, it can gain four to look like neon, or it can lose four to look like helium. So they are plus or minus whatever they need to be. They will be. Uh, the next row will be minus 3 because it's easier for him to lose 3 to look like neon than it is to gain 5 to look like helium. The next row is minus 2. To, they're, gain, they're losing 2. And the last row is minus 1. Okay, every, All of my halogens are going to adopt a negative 1. Uh, noble gases, they don't ever do anything with anybody else. They are, uh, they are content. They don't give electrons. They don't gain electrons. They are just zero. So we have this overriding pattern that is always there. Plus one, plus two, plus three, plus or minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero. Okay? Um, we'll wrap that up and we'll talk about what this means bonding-wise in the next lesson.